Hey, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. And this is question number three from the October, November 2017 <clears throat> Pure Mathematics P1 paper. And this is from the variant three. Um, this is Cambridge, the Cambridge 9709 syllabus. So this question here would be also, I guess, related to the Pure 2 P2 paper from um, at Excel, same kind of material. Uh, this is about binomial expansion. So first of all, part one says, find the term independent of x in the expansion of 2 over x minus 3x all to the power of 6. Okay, so when we want to find the term independent of x, it means a term in which there will be no x, there will be no x term, it will just be a constant. A term that will be a constant. So if we were to expand this, using like the NCR method, we would have basically our first kind of bracket would be to do with the um, you know coefficient, the main coefficient, which is found by the NCR button. From the top number is always the height, the power that we have of the bracket that we have to expand. And the second number down here would be one of the powers that are on the other two brackets, which are made up of the terms inside you know, the first term inside here, so you have 2 over x, and the second term, inc including its sign, minus 3x. Okay, so now, we've got to find the term such that um, the x's will be cancelled out, basically, right? So, you have 2 divided by x, and you have minus 3x, so what's going to happen is the numbers on top are going to be multiplied, you know, it's like 3x over 1, the numerators are going to be multiplied with each other, and the denominators are going to be multiplied with each other. So for, for us to have, um, you know, the x's cancelling out, they have to be basic. One's on the numerator, one's on the denominator. They have to be raised to the same power, okay? But those powers must add up to this number here, the 6. The powers always add up to the number here. So if I raise this to the power of 3 and raise this to the power of 3, okay, what will happen is we've got the right combination. They add up to give you 6. And also, this will give me something over x cubed, and this will give me something x cubed over something. Right, so the x cubed and the x cubed will cancel out. Right, and then the number here can be either of these two, or they're both three, so we just put 6, 3. Okay, so now that should give us the term which is independent of x. So we can use our NCR button. Okay, NCR button, so we have 6, C, 3. That will give us the coefficient from like Pascal's triangle. So it's 20 times, and then we have 2 cubed over x, 2 over x all cubed, which is 8 over x cubed, multiplied by, and you have minus 3x all cubed, which would be negative 27x cubed. As you see, the x cubed terms cancel out, and we're left with a term which is independent of x, which is going to be 20 multiplied by, so multiplied by 8 multiplied by 20, 27 be negative so you have negative four thousand and four thousand three hundred and twenty so that will be the term in this expansion which is independent of x okay so there's three part one so basically whatever power you write here and there they must add up to give you this number six which is the main power and also they have to be the same power such that the numerator the x in the numerator and the x in the denominator get cancelled out okay so that's um pretty straightforward we don't have to we don't have to go through the whole expansion and write down every single term we can use a bit of logic and decide which term we're going to use some people might actually expand the whole thing find all the you know terms of the expansion and um, then they'll see oh the one that doesn't have an x in it is this one but there's no need to go through all that trouble you can use a bit of logic to work out which term it's going to be so that's part one of this question now on to part two it says, find the value of A for which there is no term independent of X in this expansion. Okay, so now, here we have to think a bit more deeply. Because we're going to multiply 1 plus A X squared by this bracket. So we're going to have basically 1 plus A X squared. And if we think about this expansion of, of this uh, again a little bit, you know, we're going to have our 6 and we're going to have something, whatever, you know, power um, is on one of these two brackets. So you'll have 6, and you'll have 2 over x, and you'll have minus 3x. So if we, if we think about it, if you start off, for example, with 0 here, there'll be 6 there. Okay, so you're going to have 
basically that that will basically give us x to the power of six term. Okay. Um, and if we have a one here and a five here, okay, then what's that, what's going to happen is we're going to have something to the power of five divided by something to the power of one, x to the power of five divided by x to the power of one. You'll have an x to the power of four term. So you're going to basically have this times. You're going to have some some number x to the power of six, and then some number, you know, some number x to the power of four. And if you, if you think about it, they're going to go down, like the powers are going to go down in twos. So you're going to have, for example, here, when this is, when this becomes two, when this becomes two, this will become four. So you're going to have something to the power of four over something squared. So you're going to have plus something x to the power of two. So you can see the powers are going to go down by one all the way until you get to negative six. So you have x to the power of minus two, and this x to the power of zero is actually the term that we we discovered up here, which is minus four three two zero. So you're going to basically this is going to be you know x to the power of zero is one. So you're going to have this is the term independent of x in the expansion of just that part. That's your minus four three two zero. Okay. Again, we don't have to actually find what each of these are. I'm just looking at the pattern that we're going to see happening. You'll end up with in the end, all the way to that. Right. So we have to find the value of a for which there's no term independent of x in the expansion. So the terms independent of x should become zero. All right. So basically, what are the terms that would be independent of, of x in here? Okay. It's when you basically um, end up with either 1 times this term. Okay. So you have... 1 times minus 4, 3, 2, 0. That will be one term independent of x. And if you think about it, if I multiply the 1 with everything else, there's going to be an x term in it. But the ax squared, okay, if I multiply it by this term and this term and that term, you're going to have x to the power of something. When I multiply it by this term, that's going to be basically the, what, the term that's going to be something over x squared. x to the power of minus 2 is something over x squared something over x squared. When I multiply these two terms together, that's when I'm going to get another instance of, and this is in this expansion, of the ter a term independent of x. Okay, so I've got to think about what this term is going to be, all right, which is the term where the 2 over x is raised to the power of um, 2. Okay, the 2 over x is raised to the power of, I mean, the whole thing is raised to the power of 2. So let's have a look at that. We're going to have NCR. So we're going to have basically, um, yeah, we've already written it out here. So we want to end up with the 2 in the denominator. Okay. So how are we going to end up with 2 in the denominator? That's when we're going to have this raised to the power of 4 and this raised to the power of 2. Because you'll have 2 to the power of 4 divided by x squared and minus 3x squared. So the numerator will be squared. The denominator will be to the power of 4. So the total thing will get, come out as um, a squared term. And that's what we're looking for, because when I expand the bracket, this squared term and that 1 over whatever squared term, that's something over x squared term, the x squared will cancel out. So I can now put here 6 and well, I could use 4 or 2, it doesn't matter. It will give you the same answer, whether I put 6 or 2 here. Uh, sorry, 2 or 4 here. Okay, I could use 2 or 4 here, no problem. It will give you the same answer. So now let's just do that now. We're going to have... <clears throat> The NCR, so gonna, I'm going to start off with 6C4, okay, which gives us 15. So you have 15 multiplied by, that's 2 to the power 4, which is 16 over x to the power 4. And you're going to have multiplied by 9x squared, negative become positive. So you end up with, as we said, this is going to become something over x squared. So you have 15 times 16 times 9 which gives you 2160 2, over x squared so now when i multiply the ax squared with this i'm going to get plus a times all of this which is 2160 all right and the x squared will cancel out so this will be my constant term in this expansion this will be the term that is independent of x, a combination of 
1 times the constant term from this expansion and ax squared times the 1 over or the something over x squared ter term from this expansion. Those two combined will give me my term which is independent of x and for that to be for that for for that to not exist for there to be no term independent of x this combination has to give me zero all right so if the if this combination gives me zero then the, the basically the constants that were there would be cancelled out and you would be left with every term uh, having some x in it there will be no term left independent of x if the and uh, if the constant terms add up to zero so this has to all add up to zero okay so we have negative four thousand three hundred and twenty plus 2160a equals zero and then we can add to both sides 4360 4320 sorry and divide 2160 both sides so 4320 divided by 2160 so therefore we can say a equals so we just put that in the calculator so you have 4320 divided by the last answer which gives us two so A is equal to 2, and there's the answer to part 2 of this question. Okay, so a little bit of thinking involved in part 2. You have to think about the different possibilities that will give you the constant term, and then that, that constant term together, they, they must you know add up to 0 in the end for you to have no term left independent of X. Okay, so that completes this question. Um, other questions from this particular paper can be found in the playlist that will be appearing in this region over here. Other questions from this topic of binomial expansion can be found in the playlist in this section over here. You can um, subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. Okay, and um, you know, if you would like to watch a video which shows you how to find other things in my channel you might find interesting or you might need from IGCSE to, to Excel questions, whatever, you can watch the video that will be linked in this section. Thank you for watching and see you soon.